what's up guys welcome back to crypto weekly review today we're going to take a look at bitcoin it looks like it's cooling off a little bit there's some big news from micro strategies and wholesale mortgage of america so let's not waste any time let's jump straight into the charts you be all sus yeah i just doubled up on crypto i just doubled down on the new vest now my chair looking like two checks type of money made me want a two-step who next this week i'll be on the moon next stop going up like two x that's a fast flip like suplex all right let's take a look at bitcoin on the daily chart it looks like we did finally touch 50k here we broke through to 50,900. we got a little wick right here it rejected and it came down but it looks like it is holding this parabolic line here on the daily chart um i think it was still maybe just a little bit hot if you look at the dates here i think we could consolidate for a couple more days touch this line and then plow right through here as you can see, we have a daily golden cross right here where all the moving averages have crossed the 200 day. And uh, let's just uh, zoom back here and take a look at the last time that we had a golden cross, which would be right here around May, May 6th of 2020. So that was a year and a half of positive bullish movement. Um, look at this reaction right here. Um, now, I know this could be a fake out because as you can see here, do you see how the uh, exponential moving averages are, are bunched up right here to get a really good, really textbook golden cross? They should be fanned out a little bit more, but um, I do think that this this is a signal to go up. Will it last another year and a half? Uh, I, probably, I highly doubt that, but uh, I think uh, we are very, very bullish still. Ethereum even looking better here. It's holding the last R3 pivot. Got a little bit of a higher high poking through right here. It definitely looks like it's leading the market. Hex finally holding support on the R1 pivot here. I think we could definitely consolidate here. Let the moving averages catch up and then pop straight up to 20 cents. Let's jump right into the news. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 3,907 Bitcoins for $177 million cash at the average price of $45,294 per Bitcoin. As of 8-23-21, we hodl 108,992 Bitcoins acquired for $2.918 billion at the average price of $26,769 per Bitcoin. So yeah, this latest 3,907 Bitcoin they bought for the average price of 45,200 and they have their overall average is 26,769 which is pretty cozy but it can be touched you can be touched at that price but um, out of all the public companies microstrategy owns the most bitcoin in its treasury another public company with a sizable bitcoin stash is Elon Musk's Tesla in July, Musk hinted that Tesla owned about 42,069 Bitcoin. He also revealed at the B Word Bitcoin event that both himself and his other company, SpaceX, also own BTC. Who knows? He probably has a bunch of Dogecoin too. And I don't like how they say Bitcoins. It's Bitcoin. It's, it doesn't have to be pluralized. Let's go. Come on. But yeah, very, very bullish. Uh, Michael Saylor keeps buying our bags. So God bless him. God bless him. In other news, the second largest US, U.S. mortgage lender to take Bitcoin payments, the United Wholesale Mortgage, the second largest mortgage lender in the United States, announced they had plans to accept cryptocurrency as payment for mortgage loans last week. The company expects to accept Bitcoin as soon as quarter three 2021 and is looking into possibly accepting ether and other cryptocurrencies however it is unclear if the company will hold the cryptocurrency collected as is so what are they going to do are they going to switch it to fiat right away is it going to just be some dump fest or are they going to hold on to the crypto when they get it making it off the market and when there's less supply price go up and this is perfect for you guys because this will allow you to buy the absolute tippy top of the housing market the housing market is absolutely boiling right now. Just the fact that they're accepting crypto at this point. I mean, this is the absolute top of the housing market. So uh, be careful about that. All right. We have a little spat here between Mark Cuban. 
Mark Cuban slams SEC chair Gensler. Shark Tank star and owner of the NBA team Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, has called SEC chairman Gary Gensler out for his investor protection comments. Cuban said the SEC has made its regulation unclear and near impossible for anyone to follow, asserting that the regulation through litigation traps all the people who can't afford a lawyer, accountant, or advisor. He is absolutely right about this. Gary Gensler is out here saying that he wants to protect investors from big bad Bitcoin by putting all of these un these laws that are unable to be followed where you need a really high-end lawyer or an accountant or advisor just to sort out your crypto taxes. How is that helping the little guy? That's going to bury us. Don't worry, guys. The SEC is out here to protect us from one of the highest appreciating assets in all of history. It's up like 20,000%. So, yeah, we really need protection from Bitcoin. I have to absolutely agree with Mark Cuban, even though I'm not a huge fan. He says, how about making the lines bright and clear so people know what the rules are? The problem isn't that people are looking for gray areas. It's that there are no clearly defined rules in this whole thing. It's a big litigation trap. So, yeah, definitely kudos to Mark Cuban on that one. Ask yourselves, why are there thousands of lawyers at the SEC? Lawyers want to litigate in every business. If you need a lawyer to fix a problem, you have a big problem. Why doesn't the SEC have thousands of people working to make sure there isn't a need for thousands of lawyers? Hey, amen to that. But moving on, there's a survey that shows 37% of American crypto investors won't spend tokens in an emergency. <laughs> Come on, guys. Digital currency prices have seen a revival in the recent times, and investors have been feeling optimistic about future values. A recent survey of 1,000 U.S. crypto investors conducted by Gambler's Pick Notes, whoever the heck that is, <laughs> that 30% of the respondents said they wouldn't cash out their crypto even if they need to pay the necessary bill or make a critical payment. 30%, 37% of people won't cash out their crypto. 51% won't cash out for luxury or recreational purposes. Guys, you always got to take profits. Some of these people that are participating in this questionnaire, I'm sure they're going to sell the bottom. <laughs> a survey published by Gambler's Pick called Cryptocurrencies 2021 Survey Save or Spend explains that crypto holders have a hard time parting with their digital assets. Out of the thousands of participants surveyed, 135 were baby boomers, 212 were Gen Xers, 442 were millennials, and 206 were Gen Z. The study indicates that on average, Americans hold around $1,700 in crypto, but if an emergency comes, a good fraction of the people will not spend their funds. Diamond hands. Diamond hands. Hey, who cares about paying your bills? You just got to hold it until it turns into a diamond. It says millennials were most likely to skip saving for their retirement or miss credit card payments to hold on to their ex existing crypto stashes. 38% of all respondents said they skipped a payment to hold their cryptocurrencies for longer. Baby boomers, though unlikely to take on debt for cryptocurrency, also had the highest average value already saved up. The Gambler's Pick reported nearly one in four participants have leveraged a credit card to purchase crypto. Respondents of the study borrowed around $2,000 on average to pay for digital assets. 21% will take on consumer debt to get the funds. 18% will borrow from family. 11% will dip into savings. And 10% are actually willing to refinance their home to buy crypto. Guys, when money is free and being printed out of thin air with very, very low interest rates, what do you think is going to happen? Anyways, let's take a look at the wrecked plebe of the day. We don't do this to make fun of anybody. We just make sure that you don't get wrecked. It says, guys, I just got hacked bad. They wiped my ledger. Impersonators on OpenSea Discord impersonating Nate Chaston and others wiped 4.5 ETH and all of my apes and cats. Fuck. Well, that's what it is. If anybody messages you on Telegram, it's automatically a scammer. Just block them. Just delete 
and uh, report because they will never contact you. Never give up your keys, guys. Not your keys, not your coins. Be super careful and uh, don't get wrecked. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.